Jasmine, God has opened doors for you in all kinds of unique places to use your musical gift and talent. And on top of that, you're, you're uh, making it through the audition process with America's Got Talent, and we don't know where the Lord's going to take you there. What's, what's your heart as, as you're doing the music? What's your heart? Yeah, I think I just have a really big heart for humanity in general. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I hate to see when people have a gifting, they're mm -hmm. put on a pedestal and then their humanity is stripped from them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really think that that's the only way that someone can really fully experience and encounter love is if mm -hmm. their humanity is intact. Um, so I have a passion for, for like restoring that to people. And so that may look like somebody that you meet in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. It may look like a celebrity that doesn't, hasn't experienced that. It may look like a, somebody, a homeless person on the street, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but just like really seeing people get looked at in the eye, looking at people mm -hmm. in the eye and making them know that they're known and that they're loved. Um, that's probably, that kind of sums everything up for me. That's what the music's about. That's what, that's what it's all about, you know? I love your heart and your, your passion. There, there's so, so much past generations. If, if you were a worship leader or uh, any person with music and you wanted to do it for God in past generations, it had to be in the church. You got to, you know, you can only place you can use it is in the church. And if you go outside the church, you know, they're backslidden yeah. or whatever, but you're going out and you're meeting people where they are yeah. using your gift. Are, are you seeing people impacted in, in peculiar places? With your, with your musical gift? Absolutely. Um, it is amazing. Um, it's amazing what happens when you go to somewhere that has been deemed an untouchable place or a place that we're not supposed to go or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and just look at people in the eye. Just love them really well. Um, so we have a, a group of friends. We get to go out and do that together all the time. We spend mm -hmm. a lot of time just in the city, in different cities, just hanging out with people. Um, and sometimes that looks like playing a show right mm -hmm. after that or playing a show right before that. Um, but I, I feel honored to be a part of a generation where there are mothers and fathers um, in, in the body that, that are like sending us out and saying, hey, you can do that. You can go and be a voice into those kinds of places. Mm -hmm. um, it's, not, it's not so scary, you know, you mm -hmm. can go because you have a Holy Spirit inside of you. Uh, but I think a key for me is like I, I stay connected to, mm -hmm. to my family, to my spiritual family, to my church, because um, I don't. I don't have a desire to go out into any place and get lost mm -hmm. while I'm out there and, and stumble and not get back up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the only way to do that is to stay rooted and grounded uh, with people that are, that are washing your feet regularly after being in places like that and just uh, helping you stay focused about what, 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 what it's about, you know, loving mm -hmm. people really well. That's just it. What's your spiritual, spiritual heritage? Were you always a uh, Christian? Were you always in a Christian environment? No. Um, I mean, I grew up in the church, but I wasn't following Jesus <laughs> all my life. Um, now, that's, that's going to be odd for some people because people, that, some folks that are watching right now are going to say, hang on, you grew up in the church, but you weren't following Jesus? How yeah, I grew up in a, um, in a very large church in Columbus, Ohio, mm -hmm. and um, just like knew what it meant to, to be in church and to do the things that you're supposed to do in a church. I knew what it looked like, mm -hmm. but my heart, I wasn't following Jesus with my whole life. He wasn't the mm -hmm. Lord in my life. Um, and not until between my freshman and my sophomore year of high school did, did Jesus become that to me um, and I, I had an encounter in my bedroom one night. I was going through some stuff in my family. Uh, I had a, uh, basically an alcoholic and drug addict stepfather and mm -hmm. my mom was in church, but it was just a clash in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things my mom and I went through together. Um, and, and I remember thinking, if this is happening, there's no way that God's real. Mm -hmm. and, I, and one day I was in my room and I was like, where it wasn't that God, I didn't think God was real. I didn't think he saw he me. Cared. I didn't think he yeah. knew me as an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in my room and I said, God, I know you're real, but like, if, if you're here, if you know me, can you just let me know that you know me? And I felt like a blanket just fall on me in my room. It was just the weirdest thing ever. And I started freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, he's been listening the whole time. I was freaking out a little bit. Um, and it was awesome. But that in that moment, I decided, man, like, I, I want to follow this Jesus because there, there's nothing else that I've experienced up to that point that's like, that's fulfilling me. And if, and if he knows me, which he just let me know that, it means that he's up to something and he's doing something, even if I don't see it yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started just pursuing Jesus in my own way, just reading the Bible. I, didn't, I still mm -hmm. didn't really like church at that time. Mm -hmm. I didn't like church people either, but um, I started following Jesus in my own heart and, and going after him in my own, in my own personal time. And, uh, and that was the transformation that happened mm -hmm. in my life. There's, there's not a religious bone in you. And by, by that, I mean, religion is, is man's way of getting to God. Mm -hmm. Relationship is God's way of, of coming to man. And it seems like that relationship is very real for you. How did you, growing up in a household where you, church 
really didn't seem like a very positive venue. Uh, the 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 alcoholic uh, stepfather or whatever, and and not having that strength. How did you grow? What what were the triggers that helped you to grow to become yeah. this woman of God that you are today? Oh, thank you. But I, I had awesome men and women of God in my life. Uh, my my first ever youth pastors, they're actually uh, doing some awesome things for the Lord in Phoenix, Arizona right now, but they were some people that really came into my life and they just loved me really well. The first people that I remember just like, just really loving me really well and consistently and God would just send them at times in my life where I, when, once I was following the Lord, they, God would send them and they would just call me in the midst mm -hmm. of craziness in my house and be like, hey, we're outside. We just came by to pick you up and it would just be like perfect timing and it was just like, freaking me out really bad. Um, but God was like <laughs> using them in my life to love me really well. And, um, and even beyond that, they weren't like trying to, they, they weren't trying to get me to do something. They were just loving me. And if I had questions, they were there to answer them. And so for me, it was all about having people that were consistent in my life that were willing to disciple me, that were willing to lead me. Um, and that's really the only way you can grow besides just just pressing in for yourself and just going for it and, and keeping on, you know, and pursuing the Lord and stuff. And um, But, you know, there's several, I guess, different directions you could go with something like that. But for me, it was really uh, having great mentors in my life. What's really cool is, is that that love that pursued you mm. is what God is using now for you to bring that same love to people wherever wherever you can. And, and I see that, I hear that in your story. Your music is very, very powerful. It, it comes from the heart, mm -hmm. I know. And and uh, how how can people get it? Because it, it is life-changing. Your music mm -hmm. is life-changing. Thank you. Um, how can people get it? Uh, it's definitely on, on iTunes. Uh, okay. I put out an EP, which is just a, mm -hmm. a small CD. It's like a mm -hmm. demo CD. That's on iTunes, uh, just under my name. Uh, and then I recorded, I did a Kickstarter project in the summer to raise 20 grand in 30 days. Mm -hmm. So we recorded a full length album that will be coming out in the spring. So uh, jasmintate.com is my mm -hmm. website and people can go to that to find out details and add me on Facebook. People can add me on Facebook. I love uh -huh. to meet new people <laughs> and connect with people and hear about what God's doing. I love it. I know I'm weird, but I no, love it. Cool. I love that. It's very um, cool. So add me on Facebook and then they could send me a message and I'll right. give them a link or tell them where they can come to a show to hear. And you're show. personal that way. You, you do yeah. respond. It's very cool. I, I just want, I, I want to encourage uh, moms and dads, uh, grandmas and grandpas that are watching right now to say that it, what your grandchildren, what your children may be going through, keep praying for them because God can, can meet them where they're at, just like he did Jasmine. Just show up and show off and radically change their lives. And because Jasmine allowed her life to be radically changed, she's changing the lives of others. Mm. So I encourage you, get her music, find out more about her, go to our website and find out more about her. Jasmine, thanks for coming. Thank you. Appreciate you being with us.